Hello everyone, welcome back to Game Theory. This is Professor Johnson. Got some more supplementary material here for you today. This will be Plumo and the Art of Fair Play Deception, Part 2, where Aaron will take a look at leadership and teamwork. So I've selected two of Plumo's videos for analysis, not because I think they're the best ones. Uh, Plumo, as a player, produces content that in itself is a masterclass in practical game theory. I could select any two videos for analysis at random and likely do just fine. I chose this one because I felt it highlighted several interesting strategies and because ultimately Plumo actually loses this encounter despite the correct application of that strategy. Uh, you'll see why when we get there. Um, I've titled this short series Plumo in the Art of Fair Play Deception, but what is fair play deception? The term is almost oxymoronic. Uh, fair is associated with above board, by the book play. Deception is considered underhanded against the rules. Um, well, for that, I submit to you that there is ample historical context for what could be considered quote unquote fair play deception, which is to say that which is surreptitious, but not necessarily underhanded. That which is not above board, but is also not against the rules. Uh, the key, I think, is in the nature of the deception, because there's a difference between being cheated and being deceived. Uh, the latter is a game of wits, where each player has ostensibly the same opportunity to prevail, and importantly, at the outset of the game, both players are aware that deception is a possibility or a potential strategy. Um, contrast this with the former, uh, where it is uh, not only the opponent that is deceived, but the game itself is violated or the, the trust, the, the potential for deception is um, intentionally omitted or um, not considered a potential strategy or a part of the game. So there's a pretty big difference. And um, actually in the next video we're going to watch, we're going to see a pretty good example of a couple of players who don't accept the idea of fair play deception, or at least they don't seem to, but that's not going to apply here, I think. Um, but the um, the simple distinction, uh, I'm sorry, it's not a simple distinction to make between being cheated and being deceived or what is or is not considered fair play deception. That is what makes it an art, and that's what makes Plumo a master of that art, in my humble opinion. This first video will show that win or lose, he recognizes what is good deception and is able to respect it. Um, before we get into the video, just a reminder from part one, we are going to be looking at gameplay footage and Dread Hunger is a game that features mechanics built around an Arctic expedition, a la the Franklin expedition, and will therefore have themes and scenes depicting blood, gore, cannibalism, violence, animal cruelty, and murder. Uh, just a reminder, this is not required material for the course. It is merely provided as supplementary material. And if you find any of those themes to be objectionable or triggering, you don't need to proceed with this video. It will not be required to complete the course by any means. Now, if you're still here, I recommend watching the match without my commentary before watching this video. Uh, it is linked in the description of part one. Uh, as you go back, watch it on your own, see if you can pick out the player's strategies and major major plays before we go through them together. Once you do that, then come back here and keep track of as much as you can as we go through. On Canvas, I have provided pre-filled in decision trees with mixed strategies based on my analysis of some 30 Dread Hunger matches. Uh, as we watch, refer to those to see if optimal strategies have been played and respond to this week's discussion post regarding counter strategies and Sackleberg security games. Uh, also keep in mind as we watch this, this game can be classified as a simultaneous, asymmetrical, zero-sum, limited horizon game. It has very few equilibrii, but see if you can identify any using the materials that are provided on Canvas as we watch. Uh, before we get started, right at the outset of the video, there's something I think I need to explain. Uh, we will open here with a poker game. I didn't mention it before, but this is another little mechanic of Dread Hunger. Uh, the game is begin with a little card game while back-end work is being done. And essentially the way it works is whoever has the best traditional poker hand at the end gets a key to a chest and the captain's quarters that has just a little bit of starting loot in it. It doesn't provide a huge advantage, uh, but it is an early advantage nonetheless. Uh, Plumo will actually win this hand, which seems to be fairly rare for Plumo. Um, so you will see him win and then open the chest in a little bit so you can, you, you can see what's in the chest. It's not very much. All right, let's get started. 
I'm feeling good about this hand of poker. I very rarely win poker, guys. This is this is mine. I'm sorry. This is mine. I'm a winner today. Are you ready to run this match? Ready to sabotage the expedition? Oh yes. I mean, with luck like this, I'm cannot be stopped. He's damned if he ain't a thrall. I needed the other couple of cards. I didn't get Thrall, man. Ugh. That last game was my only Thrall game of the day, I bet. Alright, here's another thing I didn't mention in the last video that actually will be important for the game. So you'll notice that some of the portraits here have uh, snow effects. Uh, that's a sign that they're they're fairly experienced players. Uh, you get this effect when you max out a character and then opt to start the character all over again. They, they call it a prestige character, um, I believe. That's the term for it. Um... So yeah, you, you max out a character, you start all over again. I, I think it's called a prestige character. I may be a little bit wrong about that terminology, but that's that's what that signifies. Um, this dramatically affects the game because, as I mentioned in part one, the quality of the game in this genre depends heavily on the quality of the players. Uh, it can be expected that more experienced players will be both harder to dupe as crewmates and harder to detect as thralls. Um, also, just so we're on the same page here, Plumo here will be playing the Captain class and is not a Thrall player. Uh, it will now be up to him and the rest of the crew to figure out who those are. Uh, now, as the Captain, Plumo already begins the game with uh, with coal, but will also have a sword and a cup of tea. Uh, the sword is a high DPS melee weapon, uh, but it is still only a melee weapon. Uh, and the starting tea provides a minor buff to ward off the cold drain in the game. Uh, the captain has a passive ability, as all the classes do. However, the captain's passive ability is uh, increased ship turn speed, which in my personal analysis of the game uh, doesn't tend to amount to very much. In the 30 matches I analyzed to create the game tree on canvas, I found that the ship's position to be a factor in zero of them. Uh, the turning boon does mean uh, coal is used more efficiently, however, uh, but I've already found that the, the captain's intended role of steering the ship is really more uh, enforced by default than anything else. Uh, other classes simply have benefits that are best utilized off the ship, and since the captain does not, that is the incentive for the role to remain on the ship. In terms of game design, this is a bit of a problem. The captain player is at a disadvantage at the outset of the game simply because mechanics dictate fewer outcomes in a mixed, in a mixed strategy. Uh, however, every role relies on what you make of it, and as I mentioned in the last video, I consider Plumo to be a player's player, and as such, he makes quite a lot of this role when he has it. Uh, he takes the role to heart, acting as the ship's leader and directing crew efforts. Uh, now, actually, you can see how this develops over the course of this match. Games are stressful. Mm. Abradolph Linkler. Yeah. That's what makes them fun. Yeah, true. <laughs> Don't know who's right. so Haven't we played before Hunter? The Hunter and the Marine. Uh, who's that speaking? It's always the Hunter and the Marine, Marine one. Good story. Wait, who, uh, who is that that talked to the Hunter? Okay, we got three in here, guys. Uh, so Plumo begins the game by opening the chest for the extra supplies, uh, and then, as he always does, he'll put his starting coal through the chute in the captain's quarters. He explains why he does this himself in one of his strategy videos, which I highly recommend, uh, but the explanation is fairly simple. Thrall or not, withholding starting coal is a very suspicious thing to do, and many players will check to be sure all the coal is accounted for at the start. So it's uh, become something of a convention simply because there's a lot of eyes on that starting coal um, so getting it getting it in the shoot, whether you're a thrall or not, is at this point sort of de facto a convention. Two from the captain. Starter up, guys. Captain's on the wheel. I am driving. Seven. Hunter down. Oh, okay, fire get up at eight, guys. Right, we're still missing one because I put two in, so there's one thrall. Okay, efficient game. We're going to be observing where every other player goes and just keep an eye on what players are prioritizing what resources. Fantastic day one suggestion, especially as the person driving the ship. Captain is the ideal positioning to keep an eye on what everyone's doing. If you're a crewmate and you get the captain role, start the ship, move it forward, and just focus on what people are doing. 
think if I'm not mistaken, it's the Marine who's run really far ahead up there on that right hand side. I might be wrong, but I don't think I am. We currently have six players all going left hand side. It's not very even. I will have to go right side at this at this moment. Our uh, chaplain, uh, chef, is on the left hand side. He's digging up. Yeah, he he's, he's harvesting a body. Looks like someone's crossed over to the right hand side there. Like the chaplain. If I had higher graphics, maybe it'd be easier to tell this, or more difficult. It's hard to say. Navigator's actually not out in the lead for once. He's gone left side too. So, three, five people have gone left side. I believe it's Hunter, Doctor, let's see Doctor up there. Hunter, Doctor, probably Engineer, Navigator, and Cook. The Chaplain and the Marine have gone right side. I will join them on the right hand side. I will either be killed for being on the right hand side with them, or I will... I'm gonna make a lantern out of this blubber. Allow myself to move at night. Two cups of tea, too. This is fantastic. Alright, so we'll, we'll prioritize making stew from the resources on the right hand side. As the, the, the players who went right side, the chaplain and the marine, typically speaking, don't prioritize making stew. They might choose to do that, and it looks like the the chaplain was harvesting the wolf's body there, or maybe dug up a uh, dug up a chest. I'm not sure. Uh, don't see the dead wolf anywhere here, so I'm not really sure what's going on here. Chaplain's digging like mad. Just for a change of pace. I harvest every dead animal body we can, so we can get the stew done ASAP. And I've got a very quick... Is the wolf's body up here somewhere, Chaplain? Who's? The wolf. Is the wolf's carcass here? Now, Pluma was doing an excellent job of explaining his strategy and thought process, as always. Uh, however, I would like to call out this play right here, which he will not explain in the video. So Plumo has picked up the bones in front of the Chapman player and makes a big show of throwing them into the ocean in front of him. Uh, this is probably partly to prevent thralls from using the bones to make totems, but the way he makes a show of throwing them uh, away in front of the Chaplain is likely to build trust with him. Remember, the thralls know who each of them are. The crew does not. So if the chaplain is a thrall, he already knows the captain isn't. If the chaplain is not a thrall, now he has an indication that the captain can be trusted, minor though it may be. Oh yeah, it's over there. Like, right uh, on that. Yeah. I didn't see it. Did I miss it somewhere? Must have jumped down yeah wow annoying but we'll take it it's all meat i'm assuming that sinew must have already been grabbed by whoever it was because they harvested it once and then moved on who's playing over on that left hand side at the moment gosh a couple of players over on the left no one's back with coal yet marine i don't see marine pushing up to the second camp so I think he'll still be in this left camp, that this uh, this first camp here. Well, no one returning to coal. I want to start ticking boxes on who we think is more likely to be good than bad. It makes it a lot easier when roles are, or when crew are doing good things. Our marine and chaplain are on the right side, indeed. Let's have a quick look. We just saw him come out of the spot. Assuming he's still here. Still. still Making a lot of ammunition, presumably. And have a quick look at our chaplain, but it, it's hard to tell whether he would have done that. Someone else did. I don't think he did it. Doesn't look like these are on us. Here. What's that, sorry? There are three players all rushing. On my lab. Nice. Now I can make barrels. Three players all rushing. All playing over here. Hunter's looking to kill the bear. Typical hunter thing. Raw Shark plays whenever I play with Raw Shark's hunter. He typically does this, so it doesn't surprise me so much as it does. Uh, That's a cannibal death. Looks like it. They would have died more likely in the I'd, cave uh, somewhere. Beautiful. Hey, Marine, you want a bullet? 
One more scenery would make my job a lot easier. Let's have a quick look at these skeletons in here in case we get lucky. Fuck yes. Um, this tea will be useful to drink. Alright, can I trust you guys to get back this, uh, this, these coal? You can trust me. Yeah, cool. I like trusting you. you. I haven't got it, no. I'm, I've got the food, so I'm making stew. I can make a lantern too with this, uh, with these lubber. We'll make our backpack first. Chaplain has stayed in here for a little bit longer. I'm not sure what Chaplain's even done. Chaplain, what have you done so far? Uh, I grabbed four coals and a um, bunch of supplies from the officer's body. Lovely. I said four coal. No. I know that's a marine, but I don't like it. I'll leave a couple in here in case they want it, but I want this wood. Um... Uh, Plumo sees the inventory in the workbench and says, I know that's marine, but I don't like it. And uh, this is because of all the classes in Dread Hunger, the marine has the most business collecting gunpowder. They start with the flintlock pistol and have a passive ability that increases the reload speed of firearms. However, we also see wood and lead ingots there. Lead ingots create bullets, but wood, lead ingots, nail and gun nails and gunpowder is a powder keg that can be used to destroy the ship. So while the Marine could have been making ammunition for his gun, he also could have been making a bomb. Essentially, we see Plumo is very quickly deducing potential motives here. He's already uh, been trailing the Chaplain and Marine and sussing out what they've been up to. However, he does have a bit of tunnel vision here, as the left side of the channel had more players, and Plumo has absolutely no idea what they've been up to. Hang on to these lead ingots. Less lead ingots, so they still... I'll hang on onto these uh, these wooden planks. So I left three wood back at the um. So I left three wood on the uh. Left three wood in that fireplace, the heat heater. Very strange. Ship only just moved, so someone's either attacking each other or on the ship. What's happening on the ship, guys? It moved like two feet. What happened? Plumo is an experienced player, and he knows that it's the first night. We're nearly eight minutes into the game, and the ship hasn't moved. As I mentioned in part one, this is a Thralls game to lose, so the crew has to work to get the ship moving if they're going to survive. Now they're already way behind. Someone else get down? I think the navigator died earlier, too. Yeah, is he out of the brig? Right. No, he's still in there. What so happened to you, man? Unlock him, brother. He's innocent as shit. What happened to him? You got killed by cannibals. cannibals. He's yeah. too far away for us to do anything. Four? Only I four cannibals. cannibals. Was there only four uh, cannibals, Navigator? I am. Well, no, because yeah, I don't four. have any. I don't have any weapons. So okay, I I watch you. There's only four, but they'll kill him because he only has his spy glass. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think I he just came out of the cave, no? And someone you know, just came out the direction. Out the I was driving tied by counter. Right, that uh, wasn't the cook. Right. That wasn't the doctor. It wasn't the right. navigator. Yeah, cook, navigator, right doctor. Now, I, I feel better about. Who's driving at the moment? Engineer. What a Engineer. Driving. I have more codes, but let's wait for whiteout. So clearly, Plumo's lack of insight into what transpired on the left side of the channel is a bit of a problem. Apparently, some things went down, and now he's in the dark about it. That's not a good position to be in. Ready. I'm dying. Somebody grab Thank you. Uh, Are you going up, Hunter? Can I, I go? You go? Yeah, cool. oh, yeah. Where are you at, Engineer? Probably I'll make a shoot then. Plumo doesn't realize it, but he's about to make a big mistake. One of the perils of social deduction games is to get lost in the details and lose track of the here and now. This is no fault of his, really, but keep an eye on the doctor over the next few minutes. Are you making a shoe, Doctor? What are you doing? D? Did you hear it, Plumo? Right, go nah, no, I was just curious. Does anybody have one sinew? Oh, look. I do. He could have made a poison and a, um... May I have it? Work, but... Oh, here's a sinew. Uh, there you go. I just dropped it in front of me. Do you want the sinew? Where's, where's 
in the uh, in this in the kitchen right there's a sinu in front of the captain on the ground are you making something captain yeah making a stew Captain's back. Marine hasn't returned yet. It's not poison. I have mold them, so I'm not worried about. So that that whiteout was most likely performed by Chaplin. Uh, let's fix a ship. Marine. Uh, middle island bear is dead. Chaplin, Marine. Anyone else that I'm not thinking of? Chaplin, Marine. Uh, is someone fixing the ship right now? I don't believe okay. so. Chaplain or Marine are most anything. likely to have summoned that white out. It's possible it was Engineer, it's possible it was Hunter. There are two players I didn't have eyes on, but that's less likely because they were on the ship. The Marine and Chaplain weren't back yet. The Chaplain managed to get back to the ship during a whiteout. Let's not understate how weird that is. Uh, to start with, that's a bit of a strange... Um, it's not impossible, but it's, it's less likely given that the Chaplain was... I don't think he came back with me. He was still on the in that left, on that right side camp. The marine isn't back with their coal either, oh, so it's possible it's possible they've set up totems on that right hand side. But there was a cannibal call on someone in the left side cave. So uh, more shoe is completed from the captain. Here. I got two nails. He would. He's putting this everywhere so people can find it. It isn't. Hold that onto that. Hold onto that for myself. Um, so it makes me nervous, the fact that Marine hasn't come back. I don't really Take want to push over there. Back. Thank you very much. Did we get the coal from that left from the left cable? What happened to the coal? Uh, left? I don't know. Navigator was there first. Uh, Chaplin? Yeah, you here? Uh, no, I think Chaplin left. Chaplin was here. Chaplin said he had four coal and I didn't... Since he arrived on the ship, I don't believe four coal got put in, so that's something to keep in mind. Hmm. I forgot to put my coal in. Fuck. Uh, I have on. There's food on the ground um, in front of this, in front of the kitchen. Oh, I'm poisoned. Somebody Is poisoned. On the wheel? No? Okay. okay. Who would have poisoned Doctor you? Doctor's still here. Poisoned. Thank you, just crawled out. Doctor. Oh, are you yeah, here, no, Doctor? Doctor? Doctor, are you here? So he figures out very quickly that it was the doctor. Poison is a pretty classic doctor thrall strategy. Because they are given a syringe at the start of the game, it's less suspicious if they're seen carrying one around. It's also a chef thrall strategy since food can be poisoned as well, which is why Plumo mentions the stew. Indeed, we saw moments ago the doctor was actually chasing crew members around the ship to inject them. This eventually revealed the doctor as a thrall, but only after the damage was done. That's another setback for the crew. All right, so our doctors. All right, cool. I'm gonna make an antidote for you. A couple of antidotes. I could have been jabbed too, so I've got two laudanum. Yeah, I just got jabbed. Cool. That wasn't my stew though. That was our doctor going for an early poison play. Uh, interesting. Okay, nearest antidote will be all the way over here. Let's see how uh, efficient our um. Let's see how efficient our our um. Doctor was at removing the herbs that we needed. These doctor bags will be critical to my survival. The engineer's gonna go down though, because I can't get back with these antidotes in time. Disappointing. Marine's up here. I don't know what he's doing. I can still be saved here. The noise you hear uh, is the sound of a thrall crawling in cannibals on a player. Uh, note, Plumo turns to the marine. Uh, he just told the marine that he's poisoned, and now note the direction the marine player is facing. It's tough to see, but the marine is turned toward Plumo and now walking backwards. The process of calling in cannibals does require the player to face the target, by the way. Plumo just made a rare mistake. He has no reason to trust the marine at this point, and indeed already mentioned a possible reason to suspect him. The question is... Why would the Marine choose to tip their hand now and call in cannibals? Well, Plumo will discover that uh, around 20 minutes, 55 seconds into the video. So make sure you make a note of that when we get to that point. Marine, the doctor's a bad guy. 
so you know. Oh, okay. I've got loads of coal. Good. Um, if you see the doctor shoot him, he's poisoned. He's poisoned a few people. I haven't got... I'm making one now. I might... If these are on me, I'm dead. So. Oh, God. They don't appear to be on me. I could have been Marine. I said he had tons of coal, but if these are on me, then it just doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I think our Marine's bad. Yeah, our Marine's bad. Does anyone else have... Why is there everyone dying? Yeah, hey, uh, Hunter, 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 come here. Mm. Hunter. Somebody managed I died as well. Oh, if we have keys, know. that'd be great. Thank you. I'm still on the break, the captain. How did you die? I got poisoned and cannibal. Oh. I just, I just, so yeah, I just had a powder keg. I just Someone had a powder, powder keg. keg. That, look at him. The Marine seems to know that the jig is up, and uh, now we see the powder kegs Pluma was afraid of earlier. Hunter defused it. it. Where was it? The Marine? Yeah, with this, uh, no, yeah, it's the Marine. It's the Marine. Marine. Yeah, Marine. Right here, baby. Right next to the you. kitchen. He's got a powder keg. <laughs> oh, that bastard. Run, run, run. Right. If anyone, if anyone's a crewmate on the ship, there's a key at the front of the boat in the front of the poker room. Underneath the key, underneath one of the the uh, chairs. If someone can let the captain out. Uh, can I actually have a weapon because I'm shankless. Thank you, Cookie. Yeah. All right, uh, we can get muskets open. We know the thralls, so let's just go to the muskets and everyone get their code in. Uh, it's Doctor Doctor Marine. Doctor Marine. Oh, Doctor. Oh. Doctor. Weird. Okay. Um. Who's you hiding your shit? Yeah, knock the door down before he does something. Give it to him. I want. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want. Hey. Your stuff. Oh boy, no, 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 no. Oh, where'd you go? Come here, Pluma. Let me kill you. Why? Let me kill you. Come here. Hey, well. Yeah, there it was a strange choice. But cool. All right, everyone come no, here and let's put, let's put your armory code in and say it out loud, yeah? The armory contains muskets, which are the most powerful weapons in the game. There is finite ammo for them, so it's not a guaranteed victory even if a thrall doesn't end up with one. Plumo is hoping to turn the tide, but is expert enough at the game that he has likely seen the writing on the wall ages ago. At this point, the ship is only about halfway through the pass, and it's the end of the second night. No, it's not an impossible situation, uh, but wind conditions are diminishing by the second. They need to get the ship moving as a main priority and deal with the thralls fast, and remember, they need to kill the thralls twice. Neither of them, at least as far as I can recall, have had a single death yet. What, uh, what card is each person's? Come to the armory, guys. We know the thralls, no problem. Um, the last one is the doctor. It's doctor and marine, 100%. Second one is zero. Alright. Second one's zero, put, last one's four. One zero. Fourth one is six. Fourth one is six, that one's okay. Who's just coming Engineer, could you come and check your armory code? No, hold on, let me put mine in. Me. There we go. I got coal. Okay, cool, we can get this open. We can get this open. Are we missing two? I can crack that. Yeah, but no, we've got them all now except for the first code, so this should open. There we go, this should open. It's open! It's open, guys. Alright, get your guns, guys. Yeah. Come get your guns. Nice. Nice. Uh, if we have any spare ammunition, that'd be great. I'm a uh, little. I only have the one bullet. Alright, do we have bullets? I did not have the code. Oh, thank you. Cutting up in here, don't mind me. Oh, behind me? Two, like three technical. I can't okay, see okay. it. Uh, oh, there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Thank you. I appreciate you. Yes, the Marine... Don't worry um, about it. I need a melee weapon. I cannot just hold a gun. Mm. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to really prioritize getting coal. Anytime we see a thrall, just shoot them, but don't chase them the entire map. Uh, Pluma lays out a strategy. Prioritize coal, stick together to prevent the thralls from picking them off one by one. It's not about killing the thralls, it's about building momentum and preventing the thralls from killing that. The thralls primarily have succeeded by keeping the crew distracted. Almost no coal has been brought back to the ship since day one. Who, who wants a melee weapon? Also I'll be careful because a lot of us died. 
Here, grab the shovel. I think just about all of us died once. I need food. I'm gonna make cannibals. I'm making a stew right now. Go for it. Thrall's a pretty bad scenario. Poison play plus a very nice PvP marine. The marine made powder kegs, so it explains why he was so proud of himself, saying, I've got a lot of coal, and then I got cannibaled immediately after. It made sense. It was good play. It's a shame for me. I wish it hadn't happened, but uh, yeah. We can't afford to go off on our own too far either, because this is going to be a dangerous game from here on out. Yeah, I'll have to move fast. But at least we have all the guns. Yeah. They cannot fight us now. Yeah. As long as one, as long as we don't like die on our own with the marine, with a uh, with a musket, it'll be fun. So I vote we move as a group up to the, perhaps the left side, and then we send three out to the right side, and return with whatever yeah. coal we can get. All right, cool. Stay warm, guys. Plumo knows what the crew needs: direction. The Doctor and the Marine are thralls. If we go back to the beginning graphic, we see that they are two of the four seasoned players. The Chaplain, Engineer, and Navigator are not prestige, and while they might be competent and capable players, they might also lack experience. Now, it's one thing to know what this group needs, and it's another thing to have the charisma to actually do it, and it's one of the reasons Plumo is so good at this genre of gaming, and why I'm not, for that matter. We know who the thralls are. You don't need. You don't need to worry about being stabbed. That is. Let's go. Sorry, I kind of wait to call there because I thought you were going to. Oh, literally, doctor and uh, marine. Oh, doctor marine, yeah. Yeah. Are you guys done? I forgot. Good job. All right, she's done. All right, grab some food, guys, and let's get ready. I'd like three people with, with over to the right side of the broken ship. Let's take a uh, engineer. Navigator and myself over to the right hand side. Everyone else go to the left side cave. All right. Maybe someone can stay on the boat as well. Yeah, probably a good idea though. The person on the boat, pretty risky Just business. Just like planned. Yeah. Three navigator and engineer come right side with me. Fire. This is gonna be a risky game. I'm assuming my my body. Uh yeah, right side. Engineer, navigator, right side. Everyone else left side. It doesn't really matter. If the ship gets blown up, we can fix it. Just focus on resources. Shot a wolf. Interesting. Okay. Okay, so someone did come in here, which means those are poisoned, and that's poisoned. Okay, we've got these uh, bad boys here. Let's fight these. It's a lot of cannibals, man. Alright. Ay, yay, yay. Okay. Okay, guys, get in over here. Let's get over here and get them to come at us. <laughs> no game three here. That was just a great shot. Doctor's hit once. Doctor's hit once. Where is he? He's just spirit walked away. He just hit once. Okay. Mm. All right. All right. Yeah. Let's grab the coal. I think the doctor just cleared a lot of the coal though from there. So just grab wood. Is really what we need to do. Wood and whatever coal you can find, but I'm going to assume that the doctor's taken a lot of it. My health is quite low. A lot of totems up here. Just gonna grab them, destroy them. A lot of totems here. Explains why the marine went so PVP right away because I came up here, which I'm going to presume these were probably up here when I pushed up earlier. Um. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Health is low. Cannibal calls are down. There's some totems up here too, so once the totems are all dead, I guess we go from there. A lot of poisoned herbs. Let's just not worry about it. Two, three, four, five. 
six, seven ammunition, maybe? Yeah, I'll take it. Mm, annoying. Looted. Alright, the coal's still up here. If someone wants to come up to the right spot and grab some more coal, that'd be great. Uh... I don't mean to sound at all like I'm denigrating the other crew members here. I'm certainly not. Uh, but it is, however, in my opinion, clear that they have not learned their lesson yet. Notice how Plumo is the one who's acting alone a lot. He's doing most of the work here. I'm not sure what the others are up to right now, but they seem to mostly be watching out for the thralls or collecting fairly irrelevant resources at this point. They need to prioritize the resources, as Plumo said earlier, that will get the ship moving into the end. Uh, they don't seem to appreciate that they are seriously short on time to complete objectives to reach a win condition. This is going to take a little work. I should have really destroyed the totems first, but... Right. Very aggressive thrall game. Requires an equally aggressive response. These are not going to be necessary. Just take this full coal back to the ship. My, if my teammates die, I really can't afford to be left without them. Alright, uh, Engineer Navigator, you guys here somewhere? Yeah, yeah cool. Do right. you have any, like, two piece of wood if you find? Yeah, here's one. Oh, uh, yours, buddy. I'm gonna head back to the ship and move us forward. Hey. Yeah? What's up? Yeah, sure. I got three shots up here. Oh, beautiful. Let's come take them. Alright, they're in the workbench. In the workbench? Beautiful. Beautiful. If you want an extra shot, there's one there for your navigator. Alright, cool. I'll... Alright, come back to the ship as soon as you can, guys. And we're going to move forward with our coal. There'll be a cannibal wave, yeah. double cannibal wave coming soon. I saw them um, running around behind the ship at the uh, last camp. Uh, by the Marine. No, I missed them. No. That would have been a really good shot if I'd managed to get that. I should have probably waited. Alright, sweet. Yeah, no, one, no one came on board. Mm -hmm. I think they're making powder kegs. Sorry, I locked all the doors. Presumably, yeah. Uh, That's right. I'm a scared cook. I got nothing. Unlock them. Yeah. Yeah, this dude is cannibal, by the way. That's fun. All right, moving our ship forward a bit further. We've got four coal. Is anyone able to get through? Uh, Captain, please. Yeah, I'll jump uh, on I'll them. do it. Oh, you can if you want. Can yeah, I do cool. it? I don't mind. Whoever wants to. It's fine. No, I'm gonna watch oh, who put... boarding. We should not have put in this much gold. It can't be sabotage, we'll be fine. We didn't. Uh, straight. Yeah, but still. Yeah. Do we have the materials for each repair? Uh, I don't, but I've got wood. Get the iron scrap. Right, someone... I got a bunch uh, of you, you just passed an iceberg on your right, so you can bring it round to your right a little bit now. Oh. Just a little bit. Yeah, you're fine. Okay, we've had a decent, decently productive day. These keys aren't going to be that useful, but I'm going to leave them here in case we ever need them. You can bring it round to your right now. The ship needs to come a bit to your right. Right, I mean, yeah, yeah. To my right. Yeah, to your right. Yeah, there's nothing right. Alright, can someone take the wheel? I'm popping up. You're right. Left, beautiful. Left. Beautiful. Good. Straight note? Yep. Yeah, straight note? Right, 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 right. Right. Right, 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 right. right, right. Where you going, buddy? Right, 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 right. Good job. Straight up, straight up. Yeah, we good. We good. How much more coal do we have? Tell us what you're doing. Wait, I'm, you're I'm putting more in the, in the boiler. Yeah, okay, cool. Going right, going right, going right. I'm you going right. Yeah, no, we're, we're just going straight right now, but I'm bringing a bit too... Right, yeah. Yeah. Turn it a ship around. Trigger. Yeah. A little bit to the left. Left, left, left. Bit to your left now. All right. Little left, little left. Yep. Yep. Yeah. See now we know you're going to the left. <laughs> yeah, go on left, go on left. Straighten up. Straighten up. More to the left. Uh, we only, right. we only want one guy to navigate. Just a few of them. 
Should be right. Uh, are we, if we have anything else to put in now, it would probably be a good time so we can just get it out of this ice pool. Does anyone have more coals? Got six wood. We've got wood here that we can use. Uh, here, I'll put in ten wood. Yeah, that'll be fine. I'll put in five wood. That should be enough to get us to the end. Wait a moment, and now. Yeah, so I've fireplaces and stuff like that along the way and uh... Yeah. Well from here on out we're gonna expect a metric fuck ton of cannibals as we go up this hill. How much ammunition do we have? Can we kill the bears without problem? I, I have, have two bullets. Ringing. I have, I have ten, ten three gun powers. I have sorry, ten shots. Three ammo. You have ten shots. Can you spread that around yeah. on muskets if that's alright? Let's yeah, get a have few. Ten bullets, please share. Okay, I'm yeah. up at the captain's quarters. Um, yeah, beautiful. The, I've got two at the moment. Thank you. you uh... I put down four. So despite everything, the crew has managed to pull together on day three and use night three to move the ship forward to the end of the passage. This is where the crew must complete one final formidable challenge. They must secure explosions to blow up the iceberg blocking the way and move the ship the last few yards into open water. This requires crew cooperation to achieve as the nitroglycerin is protected by a large polar bear or two. Um, they can also blow up the iceberg with a powder keg of sufficient size, but this requires an amount of gunpowder that would, at this point, require far too much time to farm if those resources are even still out there and available on the map. Beautiful. You, you, you want the range weapon? I do. I have a gun. <laughs> okay. I'll take an um, arrow. Can okay, use the gun? Uh, let's go for the yeah, bear. If you got a bow, use it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, right cool. Side. Yeah, we, I'm just warming up a little bit before we. Can we get up all to get together? Eh? We'll take Depends. some of that stew if there's still stew left. Oh, I have stew. If you need it. Yeah, I'll have one. If that's cannibal though. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Okay. Let's kill these bears, guys. Uh, We're doing pretty well. We've got. You've got a amount of people. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Oh, we're, we're, we're down our cook. Looks bomb. like I don't know what happened to cook. Hopefully, cook's okay. Kill this bear. Alright, wait for it to get close. Huddle up, guys. Huddle up. Good job. Nice right. job. Gentlemen. Let's harvest a bit of this coal on the way up. And we'll grab. Make a fire, please. Beware yeah, I'm grabbing the resources for fires as well. Cannibal coal will be coming in soon. Nice. You'd assume they'd do it soonest, and they could do it on the way down as well if they time it right. But they might not go for that. They're an experienced tooth rolls, so it'll be interesting to see what they do. They're very experienced crew. Uh, experienced thralls. I'm expecting this game. This game is more than likely going to go the way of the thralls of oh, cooks or life all right bunch up guys up, let's melee these guys and arrows don't use your muskets if you can avoid yeah. it uh maybe a couple fires here putting a second campfire yeah, yeah. down for us here they come all right beautiful nice shooting guys nice shooting beautiful Nice. Right. Uh, make sure we grab right. wood on the way back down as well. Plenty of wood to repair. The powder kegs okay, should I'm go off any time soon. Pretty soon. Alright, let's fight this bear, guys. Oh, cannibal's still coming. Alright. Cannibal's still coming. Are right, you ready to fight the bear, guys? Ready to fight bear? Yeah. Let's go. Here it comes. Beautiful. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. I see Marine about to board what on the uh, left side of the ship. Okay, that's fine. So the uh, thralls are, yeah, the fires are fine back there. The thralls are about to board, and they're gonna try and turn the ship around, it looks like. Alright. Should be right. Uh, Let's grab Nitro and head back down. Navigator, run back. You don't need to. No, don't, it's not worth it. Just let them, let them do it if they want to the ship. It won't be a, we can fix it. We need, we need all our numbers. We need everyone alive. That's what we need right now. Here's a perfect example of how Plumo seems to intuit appropriate game theory on the fly. It's very impressive. Uh, the Thralls are about to damage the ship. He anticipated this. Some of his crewmates want to go back and protect what they see as an important resource, their ship. 
This is natural, and in many of the games I analyzed, it's a very common strategy. Uh, it's almost um, almost a thrall strategy to bait players back to the ship when they're um, about to reach an objective. Uh, it just seems to be a very effective strategy that splits up the group and diminishes the number of resources that are available to the crew at that time. Uh, which is why it's also often the wrong strategy. Uh, the game is balanced in favor of the thralls in combat as well. So most of the time, a thrall has the luxury of picking and choosing what combat to engage in and which to avoid altogether. Uh, Plumo is correct. Their primary advantage is numbers. It's a choice between the lesser of two evils, but there is certainly a lesser in this case. Since a player going back by themselves, if, it could be great if the person wins. The person loses, but fuck, it's like it's, we're done for. All right, let's grab Nitro, guys, and head back, back down with it. We've really come together as a crew, but I'm, I'm concerned. I don't think we're going to make it. It'll be close. It'll be a very close game, considering how badly everything went for a little bit there. Uh, almost got Nitro, guys. Yeah, beautiful. Cool. All right, we're not going to worry about a spare, though. I don't know if it's worth, worth it. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, do you have food for us, Cook? Yeah, beautiful. Shoes here, um, Hunter. Are you ready? I'm on the ground here. All right, guys. We need to group up. There's gonna be a cannibal wave on our uh, on our Hunter soon enough. Just gotta get ready for it. Yeah, Nav, grab that bad boy. Beautiful. Ship started sinking. The, the thralls haven't managed to get a whole lot together then, have they? Like, they haven't... Wait, they, the ship isn't sinking very quickly, and the ship presumably has been turned a little bit. How much coal do we have, guys? I've got four pieces. I have one. I got two I've got two pieces. Okay, hopefully the ship will probably be turned a little bit, so we're going to have to repair. What I want when we get down here, we need to have one person guard the navigator, if not two, and then the three try and board the ship and start repairing at the same time as trying to kill. If you see a thrall, call out where they are as loud as you can, so we know where they are in relation to everyone else. Far out. I'd love to win this game. It would make me so happy if I won this game, man. Alright, they don't have range on us though, so we should have range on us on them. You can come to the campfires and fight them here, guys, if you if you want to come group up. Nice. Time is getting mm. uh, just pointing out, look at the ship. It's been turned. Plumo was basically 100 percent correct in his assessment of the thrall strategy. Very impressive. Uh, okay, the crew is ready to make their final push, so I'll keep quiet until we see the results. Don't see, I don't see them on the top of the ship. They're probably hiding underneath. You presume? I'd love to see they a powder keg play here. It'd make me position, very happy. So... Yeah, it'll be interesting. Alright. Fight these cannibals this again, crew. Really low level, at least. Mm, hopefully. Just lawn them if anyone's really bad. I think we're okay. Gunshot from the ship. I oh, grab it, grab it, grab it. Yep. All right, navigator's yeah, swapped out. It's all right, Chefy boy. Good job. I think you'll be okay, Chef. To I don't think you have to suicide here. There's two gunshots pretty close together. I think they're both on board, so you can just drop it and throw something at it. Yeah, good job. Alright, both thralls are on board, guys. Let's board together. Care. There could be a powder keg explosion as we're approaching. Cover the guys on the ladder. We yep. Covering, covering ladder. Oh, and see them. Alright. Jump. Alright, keep going. Good job. Marines inside. He's in the back. Good job. He's on the stairs, main stairs, main stairs. I'm breaking the doors, and let's get moving, guys. We've got to get the repairs going ASAP. Alright, cool. Alright, getting the heat going, and let's get the ship moving. 
Gotta get the repairs going uh, too. Oh, we should fix the build, I think? Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, care yeah. for powder, care for, um... nails and, like, the pillars of the boiler room. Alright, grab the pillars, <laughs> the, grab the nails from the boiler room, guys. Grab nails. We need to turn the, uh, turn the, uh, turn the, uh, turn the boiler on for heat. Uh, what's the nail again? They were, like, in the pillars in the boiler room. The back room, I think. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I got some. Alright, let's get repairs going, guys. Repairs going, ASAP. Alright, where Rain's is on our... Deck. Rain's on deck. Yeah. Rain's on deck. Cool. Repairs. Oh, this is gonna be very close. I don't... No, if anyone can help me repair at the front, I need help. I need a hand up here. Oh, I died. Okay. Good job. Close the doors Thank and get some heat going, guys. Get the, get the fires going. Yeah. I'm a poison. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Alright, I'm coming back to the yeah, captain's like, quarters. Mario, you fucking quick so damn fast, put the rest of um, okay, nails are in front of, in the captain's quarters. There's four nails on the ground here. Someone that can take them out and has heat. I'm just getting my heat back up. Start getting everything going. Yep. Uh, Keep it going. Close all the doors. Where are the nails? Oh, the, the navigator just oh, took I some. The navigator just took some. Because I'm gonna fix it. Keep it going. All right, how many more? How many more holes, Gus? How many more holes? I need more heat. Oh, jeez. Um, using my musket to. Oh no. Oh, it's too late, guys. That's over. Bad luck, guys. Gave it a good crack. Gave it a good crack. I'm really happy with that teamwork, guys. We just ran out of time. Ah. Uh. just a little slow at the beginning, but the team is really great. Yeah. Bad luck, guys. We tried. GG. We gave that. GG. Red hot crack. Red hot crack. It doesn't help I killed three to start with. Yeah, I mean, I killed like two. Yeah, that poison play was massive. three horns at the beginning. GG. And that's it. As the crew seems to acknowledge, they ran out of time. They simply did not pull it together until it was already quite late into the game. And even though their efforts, even then their, their efforts were a bit unfocused. So my final analysis, uh, the crew played well, but the Thralls capitalized on their advantage in Dread Hunger. We can't know what happened on the left-hand side because Plumo missed it, but we can assume these experienced Thralls managed to slow the crew enough to cause them to be behind, then expanded on that lead by revealing themselves using the resources they gathered in the first third of the game. Plumo made the right choices, with only one possible exception. Note the materials on canvas that, in terms of maximizing survivability for the crew, it is better to stay with a larger group of players. However, Plumo does take risks, and he does so knowingly, uh, and in this case he took a risk. He even mentioned at the very beginning that if he went to the right side he expected that a Thrall might attack him and out themselves, which in a game with experienced Thralls is not a likely choice when they know each player had two lives and they have a much longer game to play. Really, I'm really happy with how we played that. I just, my one regret, my one regret was my, Tell you what, that um, a hell of a throw. was my calling out to the navigator that there was, not the navigator, calling out to the marine that there was a, um, that I was low. Because he knew to summon cannibals then. I didn't need to tell him that. Uh, he would, he mightn't have risked doing that if I uh, hadn't have done it. I don't know. It was a good game. Yeah, Sound of my death fine, warrant there. Man. GG guys. GG guys. We gave that such a good attempt. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Apparently that's disconnected. I just want to have a look at the scores again because I'm fuck I'm happy. They were good thralls. They were very capable, very experienced thralls. It was Ted and Hopdop. You guys are probably familiar with those names. Hunter played a very nice game. Rorschank. Rorschalk, even. We moved the ship quite a long way. We brought plenty of coal. It just wasn't. It just wasn't enough time. Wasn't enough time. Perhaps if we had split up and gone back sooner and start repairing before it got so cold. Mm. 
the fact it took so long to repair was a real damn it was a real um real problem real problem for us oh well gave it our everything ggs thanks for watching like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more i stream dread hunger live on twitch quite regularly the link's in the description if you'd like to come by sometime. There's a bunch more Dread Hunger gameplay videos right over here, and more detailed guides and analysis videos up on my channel if you're interested. Good luck out in the Arctic, and watch out for Bongo.